Hello, everybody, and welcome to this stream where we were going to be uh, looking at the breakout, the classic arcade game, and how it is implemented in the Rust programming language with the Bivy, Bivy game framework. I am Tim McNamara. I'm on the planet to build a better planet, and I am excited about helping you learn Rust. I uh, very much encourage those people who are here live to say hello in the comments. Uh, and for those of you who are watching the recording, uh, hit the subscribe button. And that way you'll be notified of like future events. I try to do this uh, weekly and uh, we try to find a fun project to build together. And uh, let's kind of get started. I am extremely, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really pumped about this because Bevy is quite fun, actually, although it's very particular. Like there's Rust and like there's this Bevy's interpretation of Rust. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things inside Bevy which try to remove a lot of Rust's complexity, which actually demonstrate if you are a library author, some of the really fascinating things that you can do with the type system when you're exposing a library. I'll just play around a little bit with uh, my settings. There we go. Look, boom, I'm on the right. I'm not going to get in the way. I hope that it's all legible, although I've got just my little avatar up there at the moment. I'm going to start by cheating. <laughs> and uh, the cheat code is thus. So uh, I'm actually in the official repository right now. Uh, and uh, so for example i can like look through uh readme as i readme.txt i'm actually in the official bevy repository so i'm going to add a link to that because i want you to be able to follow along with what i'm doing and hello to everybody who has said hello to me in the chat i'm uh, excited to be here it's monday morning let's kind of get started with a good week uh, if it's Sunday where you are, hello to you too. And uh, I don't discriminate on the basis of uh, people's time zones, or at least I try not to. And uh, I'm just uh, struggling a little bit getting the uh, this web browser doing what I would like it to do, uh, which is natural during a live stream. Uh, You know, naturally, when you try and do something live, uh, everything breaks. Um, so, how about... I stop sweating and, uh, and kind of give you the goss. So, here we go. Here is the website for Bevy. Uh, it's at bevyengine.org which I'll post in the comments now and the and we'll just kind of like say we'll create like a bit of a banner thingy uh, add banner okay cool boom there we go there's bevyengine.org up on the top right there is this kind of strange icon if you're outside of development uh, why well, probably most people watching this are not outside of development it's uh, octocat uh, from uh, from the GitHub world, and the official repository is here at Bevy Engine slash Bevy. Inside there are a large number of examples that we are going to pull from because there is a games link, and inside there is Breakout. This is cheating. Like I could have tried implementing it from scratch, uh, but instead what we're going to do is, is get it to build. That way you've got Bevy installed. That way you uh, have got something to work with. And then we can kind of expand it and extend it. And uh, like explain what's going on. Because uh, even though, I mean, it's example code. So in my case, I want to git pull. And this will update my repository. Boom brings in uh, about three, 311 uh, changes since I last updated this. And uh, cargo run dash dash example breakout. Oop. Oh. 
Ugh. I'm like trialing this new tool called BLE in my terminal, which provides me shell completion. Uh, but um, or kind of using my history with Atun, but um, obviously I'm I'm not as proficient at it yet as I uh, as I thought. So I take a lot of uh, I appreciate uh, Sten's comment here a lot that using the examples is like a very good cheat code. Um, now you'll see here that I'm trying to compile it and the compiler or like my my system is sort of complaining. It's blocking, waiting for the file lock on the build directory. What's happening there is I have multiple things trying to compile the code. My editor is trying to compile the code for itself. I just updated the repository and kind of like invalidated all of its caches. And so it thinks, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to go and compile everything myself. And that's a bit of a problem. So it will be nice once it's done, but uh, at the moment we don't have a working game. Uh, and so I'll just see if I can do this. There is. Yeah, so I'll just I'll just move forward. And uh, we'll talk about the game as it stands. And uh, if you here is the relative path, let's say. And so if you want to do things yourself and like have a poke around, it's uh, it's inside BV examples games breaker. Cool. Until the code has compiled, Hi, Adrian. Apologies. It's actually my system is saying that it is sending data to LinkedIn. So I'm surprised that you're not. I actually haven't gone and checked that it's live there. Um, but thank you very much for popping into YouTube and finding us because otherwise I yeah, I'll have to dig into figuring out why the, the LinkedIn live um, event isn't working uh, if it's not. So if you're in LinkedIn, can you please pop in and say hi? Uh, and uh, but let's carry on. Okay, so we start with some internal module stepping. We don't need to worry about what that does yet. I uh, will have it take a look. I have a paddle. Actually, let's see if we can build our game. Oh, we're still compiling, so I've got some stuff to, to write. A paddle is the, is the thing at the bottom. It's defined as a vector of three things. And uh, we have an X, which is essentially the width. Y is the vertical axis. I think of X and Y, or the, the Y I always remember is the vertical axis because its tail the, is, is longer <laughs> in the vertical axis, that's how I remember. Uh, and Z or Z is zero. We're working on two-dimensional space, and so we only need to draw a box. Uh, we have some sort of gap that we have um, decided is going to be 60 pixels, or uh, and... Uh, the paddle speed is 500, which is something else we can um, toggle as well or play with uh, with uh, with constants. We've got another one here, which is the padding, which is how close the paddle can get to the wall before we start uh, activating the collision detection. We need a... Uh, we, we're going to play a bit of a trick with the ball. The ball's starting position is at negative 50 in the y coordinate, so in zero in the x coordinate. Zero in the, so Bevy's coordinate system from memory, I think this is accurate, is at zero, zero, right at the origin. The, uh, so negative 50 is slightly below halfway, and the cunning trick even in two dimensions, is that the Z or Z coordinate can be used to essentially layer entities or the drawing of entities on top of one another. So 
the Z coordinate is being used to ensure that if there are any accidental collisions, the ball will never disappear from the user. Uh, so if, if we kind of like allow it to slip too far, like over uh, one of these um, uh, paddles and so forth, then um, there's some other things around the ball's diameter, its speed, and where it's headed at the, at the start. So a whole bunch of constants. So this is all kind of nice. Are we, or I say nice, it's kind of ordinary. It's not uh, particularly complicated. Um, so we're just initializing some static data. This is when, uh, so when you start to look at a bevy, uh, a bevy game, it's structured in a very particular way, but you'll see now, so everything starts within an application that has some plugins bolted onto it. Aha, so now Breakout is working, or at least it's trying to work. I don't know if the audio is coming through, but I'm playing Breakout you know, I'm rocking it, you know, I'm at, like, score is already at seven, so I think, wait a minute, there's just a weird bug there, the... <laughs> that's, I... it's impossible to die on this breakout, so our goal, our goal, if we can do it, is to, ha like, implement a mechanic such that if the, if we get to the bottom, we kind of lose a life or at least we reset the score to zero and then like we reinitialize the the ball's starting position so um that's essentially i think all we're going to get to but i think that this is that's a reasonable step forward because the current game doesn't really have like an end of life mechanic right so this uh, if you wanted to there's plenty of places to go with this um uh so stepping is oh, oh sure. so everything in bevy is implemented in terms of plugins your own internal modules in our case we have a, uh, a stepping module is determined from uh, it, like it exports its own plugin and by convention it's the uh, you implement default for your plugin to provide an initial set of reasonable defaults and your plugins operate according to schedules so the uh, update schedule is, is provided by the bevy framework and every single time that some of the game state updates this will be called and fixed update from memory oh they can go and if i click control and then click then it will take me through to the implementation and it contains mostly a schedule that contains mostly gameplay logic. See the fixed main schedule for details on how fixed updates work and the main schedule for how schedules run. Uh, okay, so it sounds like this is just useful for ensuring that something happens. By the way, I have a couple of comments saying that LinkedIn sort of sucks. And I appreciate that people have popped into the YouTube <laughs> side of things. It's really nice to see uh, comments come through. And, um, but yeah, I guess I'll just, uh, you know, it's nice advertising essentially. Ah, okay, so, so Snen is talking. Uh, fixed update has just some st stuff that runs on a fixed time schedule rather than every single frame, which is kind of handy. We don't need to burn our CPU. Update, fix date. Uh, the, uh, this at method sets the location of the stepping UI when activated. Ah, okay, so this will, this is a method that has been exported by our plugin and we will go take a look at that once we look at uh, up, uh, a little bit of stepping later. Okay, so one of the things that we have available to us when we build a bevy game is the ability to define resources, components, and entities. This, all, this, this terminology is a little bit complicated. So allow me to make it more complicated. <laughs> no, allow me <laughs> to try to simplify things. A resource is kind of a global thing like the clock is a global 
like the number of seconds that have elapsed or milliseconds that have elapsed since the start of the game. Another resource in our case is the is a scoreboard, and we have a another resource here which is the background color, and a, a resource is able to be modified uh, and accessed by the rest of the game. Well, essentially, every system has access to the same resource. So these are essentially the global variables in Bevyland. Uh, Bevy will ensure that you don't do the wrong thing, like try and have two systems update a, a resource at the same time. You also have events, so you can define an event type. In our case, we, and we, we've defined a collision. So the collision will be when the ball either hits uh, one of the paddles at the top or, or whatever, or I guess what, what are the, the bricks? We're breaking out of bricks. So we have the bricks at the top and the paddles on the bottom. If the ball hits a brick or a paddle or the walls, we need to do something. And so we can kind of uh, define a system, some function that can receive collision events and then act on some uh, act on that. And also, you could also define systems that can emit collision events. So our startup system is uh, just the uh, setup fu um, function, which we haven't seen. And for our gameplay simulation systems, use the fixed time step at 64, 64 hertz. So that's 64 times a second. Uh, we apply the velocity changes, we move our paddle, we check for any collisions, and then if there is a collision, we play some sound. Chaining systems runs them in order. It's important that we move the ball and then check for the collision. If we check for, so Bevy will try to run all of your systems concurrently. If you don't, you might have a situation where in some update or some tick, you will move or you'll check for a collision. There'll be nothing there and you'll try and move. Or you might have a, an instance where the play event will happen first and then the logic will say if there has been a collision, which there hasn't been, even though, yeah. So it's important that these are all changed together. Uh, one after another. So essentially, uh, this system becomes some super system, or this the set of systems becomes like a super system that executes in order. Uh, whenever, however, update scoreboard doesn't really matter if it's called in the middle of moving the paddle. Like, that's not really going to interfere with anything. I mean, suppose maybe it could. Have be a, cause a problem if you are, um, but it might be okay that you, you could be one or two frames out with the scoreboard. Like the user probably isn't going to notice that the score is one below. Like with if you're playing at sixty frames a second for like a couple of frames, while we're talking about uh, less time than humans can actually perceive. So um, that's probably okay. And the other one that we are running it every update step is if I push escape, I close the window. Oh, so sorry about the connection. I apologize for that. The, the recording is being uh, re stored locally live. Sorry, this recording is being stored at high quality locally on my machine. And after the, that has been uploaded, I'll publish a link uh to the high definition recording so apologies if you are um you're getting frustrated with um with 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 my connection not being as fast as it should be I'm a little bit surprised that that has happened because i would should i would have expected that the, this is, I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah i can go and check the stats but that would just be distracting Aha, okay, so we talked about resources. We now need to, uh, let's like play our game again because that was kind of fun. Um, we, maybe we'll change something. This is getting a little bit boring. Uh, so, oh, what have I done? I've made a change in my, I had a typo there. So we have, a, we're not going to work through all 450 lines. 
Uh, let's try and change collides with, let's see where, so I'll, let's go over the mechanic that we want to fix. The mechanic is that the wall at the bottom is, uh, it, it lies to us. And trying, it's trying really hard to compile on time. It really is, I uh, promise. The other thing is that you will typically try to compile your code under the release mode rather than under uh, just example. Uh, so you'd add like a dash dash release. That means that your system will run a lot faster. Um, unless you're using a debugger, you probably won't notice the difference. Um, okay, so now our application is loading up and here's our breakout game. So this is great. We're updating our score, you know, but the bottom doesn't actually allow us to lose. There is one other thing that you can do, which is to uh, change uh, some of the um, so we, there's a there's a, a menu that the game provides that pro, uh, you um, that allows you to like invoke any of the uh, systems, but um, oh, and actually you can you know step frame by frame if you want to to kind of inspect things and see how they go, um, but. We don't really need to worry about that. So um, I've just had a really good request. Like, are you using dynamic linking? The uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, this example is actually being uh, exported from the uh, cargo.toml, the original one. And that will, maybe I can try. If I run example features, apparently, I need an underscore. So the only problem with doing this right now is it's going to force me to recompile everything with the dynamic linking. So the first time I run this, it's actually going to slow me down. Uh, so I'll just allow that to compile. And let's change a little bit of the mechanics. So we want, we've got to collide with side uh, system. And the problem that we've got is the Y I think that collide with side is we need some sort of distinction between colliding with any of the walls. Uh, or perhaps we need some other form of collision. Uh, actually, you know, what we could try and do is like if we get, so at the moment we have, we check if we collide. And if we have collided, so that's down here. If if we if collision matches some, and then we uh, then so by the way, okay. So the game is now loaded with the dynamic linking feature, and so if I try to recompile, it should be much faster. Oh. There we go. It's almost instantaneous. There, boom. So I appreciate uh, I appreciate that a great deal. <laughs> now, one of the thing is that we despawn bricks, and we need to be able to change the mechanic of hitting the bottom wall. 
At the moment, all we do is change the, velo the y velocity to positive z. Like we, we bounce off the bottom. So we need to change this to, uh, let's start by, going the opposite direction. Let's start by just cheating a little bit and then we'll fix it up. So I'm going to match collision bottom again. And oh, 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 where did I go? Because I don't want to touch the original logic. Uh, I could just, uh, I mean, I, I can implement it here, but I want to sort of have logical, uh, two logical paths. Uh, essentially, and one of the things I could do is just uh, do nothing, but I'll just leave that as is. And uh, so there's two ways I can match my collision again. And if it's a, my editor is a bit confused. Ah, it's saying that I need to fill the match arms. If it's bottom, Anything else? We'll just skip. I keep touching things and breaking my editor. Okay. Now, ball velocity. Ish. Y, zero, zero. x zero zero so what this is going to do is just lock the ball at the bottom ah oh we get a we get an error you seem to be ah, and then i was thinking well there's another way of doing this which is instead of using a match we can just use an if let and this makes it very obvious what uh what the if let syntax is doing it's just a pattern match trying to use bivy in, in my orange pivot wow i mean the problem with using something like a, a raspberry pi or any of its clones is that compile times are going to hurt so if you try and do that that's absolutely fine but just be aware that it, the easiest way forward might be building on your local like your actual laptop and cross compiling for the Raspberry Pi or ARM64 architecture. The, okay, so this is, these are functionally identical. And now, so we've introduced a new mechanic. So let's go test our code. And you know, once again, so what we expect to happen is that the, the, the <laughs> what we expect to happen is that the ball gets stuck at the bottom instead what i've done is it's got stuck it's glued to the bricks so something weird has happened you know what the collision okay i need to figure out so a collision bottom is like the bottom of the actual thing that I've collided to, such as the brick. It's not the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yeah, so we've just implemented a new feature. And this is actually, it was actually part of the original breakout. I remember playing this uh, when I was a kid. And there was like one power up that you got and your balls would stick uh or your <laughs> okay so now i need to figure out how to find the actual position and i'm going to go and check the collide again so there's the bounding circle and because it will have the oh yeah. return some of the ball collides with wall 
Well, maybe I need to go back to this and be like, well, if I have, I could change this to return like whether or not it is the bottom or not. Uh, because we only really care about the bottom wall. Uh, the nice way to do this would be to define some enum about like which wall I'm connecting to. Uh, but, and then we need to push our logic into, you know, this collision bottom thing is not where we need it to be. So I'm glad that I didn't change that in there. Uh, it's actually collide with side. Wait. Oh, collide with side. It's talking about a wall. But the wall is not, is it not the exterior wall? Is it for every entity? So it's actually for every brick. Every brick has a wall. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now we have a difficult problem. So, uh, <laughs> I now need to explain queries and see whether or not, I wonder, maybe I can get this thing to, ex uh, to a, maybe I can like add some debug output to tell me more about the collision event because I really want to know. So what we're doing is, uh, uh, I thought for like, tell me more about this. So I need a collision where there is no brick. You can check maybe brick is false. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I just figured out. So we are, um, collide with side. By the way, if you're doing this yourself and you're coding at home and you figure out how to do this, just tell me, show me the code and I will um, gladly pump your, um, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just use your <laughs> version. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, a brick is just four walls. Now that, that like that's some Pink Floyd kind of metaphorical shit right there. Um, <laughs> don't know. Okay, right um where if maybe brick is some else so this way we know that we have not hit a brick but we have got a collision now if we're at the bottom of something we've either that we also need to check that we're not at like we're not hitting the the paddle and the collision will not be at the bottom it will be at the top Because uh, the actual out extremities, oh, why is this wrong? This if alpha can be collapsed further. Okay, so I'll just, thanks Clippy. Okay, so I feel like this d demands a comment, um, which is, and an, uh, it's hard to know exactly where to put this uh, comment. It's like, uh, stop the ball if we have hit the bottom of the screen. Okay rerunning the code last time we ran this we uh totally changed our we, we 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 glued our ball to the brick <laughs> this time <laughs> we got the right dynamic like we got the, what we wanted in some ways which is that we made our game completely, we got the thing sticking to the bottom, but then I had multiple issues. My sound card just like screamed at me because I'm like, Ugh. I couldn't even move the, 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 now we've made the game completely unplayable. 
So the mechanic that we wanted was that when we hit the bottom row, uh, that that we 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 want to kind of reset. Now, if I remember the the very first game, it's like when this, and I think I would have been playing on Atari or something, and my uncle had an Atari, and I um. So Breakout had this special thing and like for the first 10 seconds, you couldn't die. You couldn't, you know, so maybe the easiest way to, I say, maybe, uh, the easiest way to go from here will be saying that uh, if you are, you know, within 10 seconds, then I... I need a new query. So I'm going to mute. Uh, uh. The reason, another way to do what I want, which is to make the game playable again, would be to alter the initial direction and the location of the paddle so that on reset, the paddle always is in the place where the ball, like where the ball is going to hit uh and yeah so actually it's not a query snen has a really um really helpful tip which is that you could pull in the time resource with res time of uh, res time so and uh and that's actually going to be very very handy for us because we want to be able to see whether or not if the collision is top then we're probably at the bottom of the screen because we're not hitting a brick but we have collided with something we need a decision you know if we decide to allow balls to con to collide with each other then we'll need to change this mechanic as well so and time why is this confused Delta seconds, 54 elapsed seconds, uh, less than 10. Now we'll get frozen at the bottom. Ah, now we get a little bit confused because we're actually passing in an expression rather than a... Um... So I just need to change this code, which is that... I'm going to just match on time elapsed seconds. Is less than 10. I've crashed um, Rust Analyzer, which is always nice. <laughs> I shouldn't be using nightly features from the compiler. Uh, and then we also need to, now I can actually have if let in the same place as I had before. Oh, I need it more than 10 seconds, otherwise it's only going to fail uh, for the first 10 seconds. And this will be... Um, I'm going to just... Uh, I've confused Rust Analyzer, so I'm just going to resave, and we'll pull out the full compiler error message. So sometimes it's a little bit confusing what, why, why things have gone wrong. In this case, I have a, something that seems perfectly reasonable. I have an if, like an if statement, and I'm saying if uh, time has less is greater than ten. This looks like, and so this is returning some boolean, but it's complaining about a lift, a let expression. So one of the things that can happen is uh, I might find that I, uh, one of the things that has happened is I have a syntax error and that has confused the analysis tools. And so they're giving me spurious error messages. And, 
why okay spurious not spurious now this is a bit confusing so i'm just gonna try and match collision again Well, I think what has happened. Okay, right. So it really didn't like the letters. Oh, oh, oh. Non-exhaustive uh, non patterns. We can fix that. We know how to deal with that. We just use the underscore and then we just provide unit. We do nothing. Aha. Now the compiler is a little bit <laughs> confused. And moreover, the, the linter said, you know what? You should really just replace what you've done with an if let you seem to be trying your match for an inequality check consider using if let oh uh, oh consider using if uh, except i'm just going to allow the compiler to actually work um because i really want to see if this mechanic has actually changed what we want so what we want is our ball to bounce off the ground for the first 10 seconds we can now play and eventually we'll stop. Ah, okay. And we have been able to debug live. Oh, there was no if. And then, yeah, no if, just let. So I was, I was wrong. <laughs> Which is quite common, I must say. Yeah, and now I'm colliding every frame. So I need some sort of toggle. Uh, some sort of switch. So I don't need mutability over here. Um, but we have the mechanic that we want, except that we haven't provided any indication to the user. That what we actually were like, hey, yo, 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 <laughs> we're in some special mode. Maybe we should change the color or something and say that the ball is kind of uh, magical for the first 10 seconds. And then, um, but I'm not going to bother with that now. Let's carry on with uh, trying. I want to f reset the ball's position, not to X, Y, zero, but instead let's reset it to the initial position this is going to be a, we need it to set it back to the starting position and i want to find out where this is used because we apply a transformation to the ball uh, and I wonder if a so there's transformation logic over here as well and the oh and a really good point is that a transform is some component is the component type that tracks the position in the world space so I am going to do something silly and please Tell me if I am wrong here, Snen, and that is, I'm just going to, from this trans, I've got a ball transform here. I can just update it, can I not? We'll find out, although I, I've said that it's not mutable, but let's say that it is. Although I'm already updating the velocity, but I wanted to change its position. Hmm. Like I, because I don't want to create a new ball like in the right place. Um, how do we work with transforms?
Yeah, I think that this is right, that uh, we're actually going to need a, a query to say that I need to access the ball. We've got a ball query with a transformation, which is actually what I'm talking about now. And ah, OK, so the velocity component is its own thing. Transform is uh one we we um there's our balls sorry everybody who's watching and thinking why isn't this person actually doing any coding i'm just kind of muttering to myself i i i tend to mutter and code quite a lot especially when i'm live okay so i've confused rust analyzer and uh so the velocity and the transform are separate and transform translation truncate we need to i just want to see if i can pull out the attributes of the transform and what we need so we provide we get the ability where we can translate the position and we are just going to do translation is the ball starting point. Now the game still is not playable. We get an up, we get an error. Cannot assign to transformation, which is behind a read only reference that's denoted by the ampersand. So this error returns I think that's wrong because we just asked for it to. Oh, no, 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 no. You want ball transform. Ah, yes, we do. Apologies. Honestly, Dan, without you, I would have, um, this would have been a significantly different stream. <laughs> so what are we doing? we're getting the ball transform which is the position and we're just saying that plonk it right there back to its initial position unfortunately we have a problem and that is the velocity has actually changed again uh like back to nil nil we could change this so that the uh if we find is uh ball speed let's see if i can find the initial speed the, i mean i know that it's 400 but the direction is so this is what we need we want to get the direction take the norm it's a vector we want to normalize it and then we multiply by uh speed if you want a The only thing here is that I wonder if this will work. Can we just update it in place? Let's find out. No. Compiler is not so happy. The problems that we face is that, uh, okay, so it's actually, so the ball velocity is a pointer to some object or to some struct. Uh, now, velocity is not a pointer. Velocity is just an actual object. It's a value. And so we actually need to dereference ball velocity and give it a new thing. Uh, there's probably a better way to um, to do this when just dereferencing, but we could just see. So what we're going to do is like reset. We still haven't touched the scoreboard. It might be an idea to set either like have some increment where we uh, reset the scoreboard to zero. We might have some kind of level mechanic. Um, there's other things we can do. There's essentially no play. Like, but hopefully what I've done here is prevented infinite. St oh, we've created a crash. Query. Check for collisions, accesses components, transform, transform in a way that conflicts with a previous system parameter. Consider using without to create disjoint queries or merging to a param set. Uh-oh. Okay, so essentially what we've done is <laughs> broken the rules. And 
the rules are that you can't touch things that you're not like you're not really allowed to and i just need to check you need something like in the core to clarify that white return is a ball query so if you look at the the compiler error message it's saying that consider using without t to create disjoint queries which means that the the analysis system will be able to uh uh, introspect the type system and guarantee that it's impossible to do the wrong thing. You'll see here that the ball query has with ball. So it's kind of like essentially the query is annotated with uh, some information in the type system about balls, but the collide the collision query has a collider with kind of constraint added. And Snen is saying, hey, eg without ball. So let's try. Uh, we don't need mutable access on the collision. We don't need to touch anything. Uh, I do wonder. Ugh. Uh, maybe, how do I have like a a compound ah oh, okay I was just like wondering how on earth do I provide a type that uh, or like how do I do this and <laughs> snin to the rescue <laughs> uh, so I'm saying that I'm uh, sort of having this compound uh, filter with uh, two type constraints which uh, I've created a tuple of two type parameters which the uh, type system thinks of as a single type, uh, sort of a compound type. Um, and now I don't know if we've fixed the problem, but we've at least changed the problem. <laughs> compiling, compiling, it's getting closer. I feel like, you know, one of the advantages, oh, you get this anticipation, this tension. <gasps> It's running. Go, go, go. Ah, yes. Oh, come on. And at 10 seconds, the game changes suddenly. Aha. Look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> we've broken it again. But um, we've, we've broken it in some other way. So we should probably point the... <laughs> The collision like detection is not so sophisticated that like my paddle seems to be having superpowers. <laughs> um, so we need to fix that. But in principle, we've done actually what we wanted, which is to ensure that the bottom has not there. I will allow everyone to uh, submit their own code. So from here, I have some uh, uh, requests or queries or problems. I would really like anyone who has enjoyed this stream to like uh, contact me with their fix. And uh, the place to submit a pull request is GitHub Tim Clicks Tutorials. I haven't created the And I'll create a folder now, which is bevy tutorials. Uh, and I'll just um, banners. So what I would love to see, so here is where I'm posting or uh, sending you now. And if I create a, oh, I'm not signed in. So that won't actually be as effective as I would like. So I'll just open another browser where I have um, actually signed in. And over here. And if I add file, create new file, 
and what is the date? It is 2024.03. March, what? And uh, let's say this is a uh, breakup. And then uh, slash readme dot markdown. And oh, you know what I could do would be to uh, code from uh, our breakout line. Commit changes. Now, here is a, a here is a link to a folder that will be populated with the code that we've got to so far. What I would love to see is like explorations and like your versions and we can include multiple of these. I can also, there are several other people who have implemented breakout in different ways. And it would be wonderful to kind of gather a little collection here of different tools, oh sorry, different uh, approaches and, and some other mechanics. Like maybe we could like add gluing uh, or like power-ups as well. There's, there's lots of places to go with, um, with this game. This kind of silly arcade game that was created I think in the late 70s, I'm not sure. Uh, I think in its original version. And I think the original implementation like was, I think these were like literal arcade games. So you had like a physical box, like you know, like a screen and like a joystick. Beep, 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 beep. Um, anyway, it has been absolutely wonderful to hang out together. I am Tim Clicks, and uh, I'm on the planet to build a better planet. Take care, everyone. I uh, enjoy, I'm really enjoying seeing where this goes. Cheers.